What a game. <laughs> what a game. Man, oh man, oh man. Okay, let's get into it, y'all. So the Pistons lose to the Celtics tonight, 118 to 124 in the thriller at Little Caesars Arena. And this was a tale of two halves, man. This game was a tale of two halves. What it came down to in the end was this. Boston showed why they're the champs. And the Pistons show that they're a young team that is learning how to finish and win games. That's that's what it came down to at the end of the day. But yeah, this was a tale of two halves. The first half, it looked like two totally different teams on both sides. In the first half, it was tough to watch as a Pistons fan. I'm just going to tell you that. Um, the Celtics, they were just raining threes. They knocked down nine threes in the first quarter. And they scored 42 points overall. The Celtics are a very, very good basketball team. They have shooters and shot creators everywhere. And... Porzingis didn't even play. He wasn't even available tonight. But the Pistons didn't make it any easier for them either. They didn't have a sense of urgency that they needed to compete against the champs. It just wasn't there early. And Jason Tatum came out hot. He had 17 first quarter points and he just couldn't seem to miss. He was just launching them from everywhere and they were just falling. Boston came into this game averaging 52 threes a game. And they were well on pace to hit that number in the first half. And then the third quarter happened. <laughs> the third quarter to me was the highlight of this game. This game did go down to the wire, and we're going to get into that. But the third quarter for me was the highlight of this game. So listen, this is game three of the season, right? But this quarter had a playoff feel to it. This, the second half as a whole had a playoff feel to it. The third quarter had a fourth quarter feel to it. So just to kind of backtrack a little bit, the Pistons were down by 11 at halftime. They were down by 23 in the first half, but they cut it down to 11 at halftime. And here's what stuck out to me, though. Last season... This game would have been over four or five minutes into the third quarter, but they cut it down to four midway through and they fought. They fought, man, and they cut this thing down to four points midway through the third quarter and they turned up the heat defensively too, man. This team is different from last year's team. They don't quit. This team is stubborn. They don't quit and they believe they can win with the guys they have around them now. You can see that. Assistant coach Sidney Lowe said at halftime that the Pistons couldn't continue to give up three-pointers to Boston. And you could see that in the second half for sure. They were pressing up on guards. And you could also see that they were rotating and closing out on shooters much better in the second half too. They just weren't giving up anything easy from the three-point line. That third quarter, man, was a thing of beauty to watch. Everybody was getting in on the action too. K was making good decisions with the basketball, scoring that will in that midi or in the post when they weren't doubling. Um, orchestrating the offense beautifully, man. Tim Hardaway, he was knocking down shots. Jaden Ivey was getting downhill and finishing at the rim. Jalen Duren was protecting the paint and finishing everything at the rim as well. Um, Stu was getting offensive tip-ins and keeping possessions alive, ripping the ball away from Luke Cornett. Uh, Fontecchio was knocking down transition threes off turnovers. And before you knew it, the Pistons were up by two. Now listen, moral victories, they mean very little to me, right? But when they went on that run and shut the NBA champs offense down the way they did in that third quarter, at that point, I just kept telling myself that regardless of how this game ends, it was a win. It was a win. This team mentally doesn't throw in the towel. If you remember last year, this game was a reverse of last year. The Pistons were up 20 points in the first half and ended up losing it and giving it all back in the second half. This team is just totally different. They're not mentally throwing in the towel anymore. They're playing with pride and they're playing for their fans. You could see it. You could see how tired these guys were too. You could just see the exhaustion in their body language. You could see JD going up and grabbing boards and tossing it to Cade and, 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 and soldiering down the court. Like you could just see these guys were gassed, but they kept fighting. They kept fighting and the fans kept pouring into them. The fans were showing their appreciation for their hard work on the court. And I think that kind of gave the Pistons an extra jolt to keep pushing. And the fans and the players just kind of fed off each other. And the Pistons kept up the energy in the fourth quarter. The Pistons effort was absolutely there. They were playing with grit. They were playing with toughness. The Celtics were looking very uncomfortable because they weren't getting those same open looks that they were getting in the first half. Thanks to the Pistons turning up the defense. There was a lot of iso ball, a lot of ball watching for Boston. A lot of tough shots. A lot of low shot clocks, right? Because they weren't able to run their offense. They weren't able to move. They weren't able to swing the ball. But the problem for the Pistons was turnovers. They had chances to really push their lead of six to double digits in that third quarter, multiple times. But either a turnover or a missed open shot kept the crowd from going crazy and forcing Boston into a timeout. You could just sense the crowd was ready to go nuts, but they would turn the ball over 
or they would miss an open shot. Tobias Harris had a few plays that really hurt the Pistons in that third quarter. He played hard, right? He was trying to find other ways to be effective. He was, you know, getting on the boards. You know, he was trying to assist for others. He was setting hard screens. He was trying to make sure that he was creating space just by being on the floor, right? But it was just a few plays where he really hurt the Pistons with turnovers, offensive fouls, or just missed open shots that could have really just blew the top off of LCA. So here's what happened at the end of the game, right? The Pistons were down four points with 20 seconds to go, and K drives and finds an open Malik Beasley, who knocks down a clutch three-pointer. Pistons down by one. They foul Derek White, and he knocks down both free throws. Celtics up three. The Celtics then intentionally foul Kate on the next play because they were already in a penalty and they didn't want to give the Pistons a chance to try to tie. So Kate knocks down the first. For me, as a basketball player, when I played, knocking down that first free throw in a crucial situation. That first free throw is the toughest. If you could knock that one down, the second one is usually easier. It kind of takes the pressure off. And I thought the second one was going to be good for sure. Came up short. Celtics rebound. Jalen Brown knocks down two free throws. They go up four, and that basically ends the game. <sighs> so before we get into Kay's free throws at the end of the game, right, let's take a look at how he played tonight. So Kay finished with 21 points, 10 assists, four blocks. One steal on nine for 22 shooting, and he shot two of eight from three. So he was aggressive tonight looking for his offense, but he just struggled with his shooting all the way down to the end. And he also has seven turnovers as well. So he's, this is the second game in a row now where he's had seven plus turnovers. Last game he had nine, and tonight he has seven. So that's, that's becoming something of an issue that I think he has to kind of keep an eye on, that we got to kind of keep an eye on. Um, he did play 41 minutes. That's a lot. That's a lot of minutes, right? So understandably in that second half, especially, he was probably gassed. But it's something that I'm sure he's got his eye on. So, getting to that last play, we all know it. He's got to knock it down, right? He's got to knock that free throw down. I know it. You know it. He knows it. Everybody knows it, right? You know, and that's something that he's going to have to learn from because I'm sure he's not going to get this one too quickly, right? I'm sure he, if he could have that free throw back, he would. And you could just see the disappointment in himself on his face. You could see he couldn't believe he missed the free throw. This has nothing to do with Cade's clutch gene, nothing like that. He just missed the free throw. It happens. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole of what does this mean for him in the clutch and all these different things. No, I'm not going to go down that road. He missed the free throw. It didn't go in. We needed it. It didn't fall. Let's jump to Jaden Ivey. Man, guys, Jaden Ivey, man. It's only been three games, but Jaden Ivey is coming. Jaden Ivey is coming, man. He is coming. Question, does anybody still want Scoot Henderson instead of Jaden Ivey? No? Okay, me either. Jaden Ivey stat line. 26 points, 6 assists. Five rebounds, one steal, and one turnover in 39 minutes on 10 for 18 shooting, two for five from three, four for five from the free throw line. So guys, he's continuing to show that he can be efficient with the basketball. And he's he did it tonight. He shot better than 50% from the field. He shot two for five from three, four for five from the line. He had six assists and only one turnover. He's playing very, very good basketball offensively. He did have some lapses again defensively, but you can see once again, he's, he's really trying to lock in as much as possible on both ends of the floor. And he's really getting after guys defensively and he's not really fouling. He only had two fouls tonight. It was fun watching him play tonight. You can just slowly see him getting better and better and better with his pacing, with his decision-making, with his shooting. He's becoming a better basketball player all around, and you can see it game over game, week over week. And it's really refreshing to see. I'm not surprised at all because he's a gym rat. He's always in the gym. One of his greatest skills is his work ethic, and it's showing for him early on in the season. It's only going to continue to show for him as the season continues to go on. So you can see that his ceiling is very, very high once he continues to put this all together and polishes his game up. He's going to be a very, very good player. He's going to be a star. He's going to be a star in this league. But getting back to this game, and tonight in this game, no Celtic could stay in front of him. Whether it was Derek White, whether it was Drew Holiday, whether it was Jason Tatum, whether it was Jalen Brown. No Celtic could really stay in front of him consistently. He shot 85% in the first half. He continues to play well offensively. He continues to show that he can knock down the three ball. And defensively, he guarded Jalen Brown very well. He's one of the few guys who has the foot speed and the lateral quickness and the strength to keep him in front and force him into tough shots. And he did that tonight. Tobias Harris had another tough game. Another tough game for Tobias Harris. He finished with eight points, 11 rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block, two turnovers in 31 minutes. And he shot two of 11 from the field overall and 0 for 5 from 3. He did shoot 4 for 4 from the free throw line, but if he has an average game, the Pistons win this game. 
on both sides he just wasn't good tonight he really just struggled he struggled defensively tonight with rotating and getting out to shooters which he wasn't the only one but it just added insult to injury because he wasn't giving you anything offensively either he missed a ton of open shots ton of open threes i think he understood that he just didn't have it going tonight he was trying to be effective in other ways and he had 11 rebounds but he has to provide more than eight points. He, he has to shoot better than two for 11 from the field. He took the first three shots of the game. All were threes and all were misses. And on the fourth possession of the game for the Pistons, he got stripped. So he just struggled out of the gate. He just did not have a good offensive night. And we're going to need more from him going forward. He's played three games so far, and his highest scoring game is 13 points in the season opener against the Indiana Pacers. So he has to pick it up offensively for the Pistons to have any chance to be successful this season. Jalen Duran finished with 15 points, nine rebounds, Two assists, two blocks, and two turnovers in 29 minutes on 7-for-7 seven seven shooting. JD played great tonight. This may have been his best game of the season. Maybe not in the stat sheet, but just defensively. Just with his effort and his rotations and being where he's supposed to be defensively and protecting the paint. He did a really good job of protecting the paint tonight. I was also happy to see him get more than four field goal attempts. The first two games of the season, he only have four field goal attempts so i'm happy to see that he's getting involved more in the offense because we all know when that happens for a big guy it just is going to make him play that much tougher on defense tim hardaway jr had nine points two rebounds and two assists in 37 minutes so he didn't have a high scoring night but that was probably in large part because he had to guard jason tatum primarily who had 37 points Jason Tatum was getting what he pretty much wanted on Tim Hardaway Jr. Not because of any lack of effort, but Jason Tatum is 6'8", 6'9", and Tim Hardaway Jr. is 6'4", maybe. He was giving up a height and size advantage all night in this show. So I'm not, I'm not too upset with Tim Hardaway. He was battling tonight. Defensively, he was battling. He was trying his hardest. He was playing physical. It wasn't a great game, but it was, but it was, it was good enough for what we needed tonight to get away from him. Let's take a look at the bench. Simone Fontecchio, welcome to the party. This was by far his best game. He had 11 points and two rebounds in 18 minutes on three for six shooting, three for five from three, two for two from the free throw line. So in the last two games, I talked about this. It seemed like he was thinking too much and he was too concerned about stepping on everybody else's toes instead of just playing his game. Tonight, he got back to just being himself. He was aggressive on offense. He was even putting the ball on the floor when given the opportunity when guys were closing out really, really hard on him and making the right plays. And he was getting out in the break and knocking down open threes. And that's what we need him to do. That's what he showed us he can do last season. And that's what he's gonna need to do for us this season for us to be successful. And he did that. So shout out to Fontecchio. We need consistent output like this from Fontecchio. I'm not saying he has to go three for five every game, but he has to continue to play his game. Play tough defense, move without the ball offensively, get out on the break, knock down open threes. That's what we need from Fontecchio. Malik Beasley, man, he played great again. He. Up to this point, he's proven to be the biggest acquisition this offseason so far. He has 17 points and 3 rebounds in 20 minutes. 17 points in 20 minutes. That's impressive. He shot 5 for 10 from the field, 5 for 8 from 3. 2 for 2 from the free throw line. He's exactly what we needed. <laughs> you can't put it any simpler than that. He is exactly what the Pistons needed. We needed a spacer, a consistent sniper from deep. He even knocked one down from 35 feet, just pulled up. Just rose up and knocked it down because he's a rhythm shooter. When he's in rhythm, it's pretty much money. It's pretty much money. And he made some crucial threes for us. Like I mentioned, he made the three-pointer to bring us within one when we were down four at the end of the game with 20 seconds left when K found him open. So he is proving to be everything that we hoped he would be and more. And I, I, I couldn't be happier with, with Lee Beasley. I hope he continues to, to let it fly because there's not many players in this team, if any, that I want shooting threes in that guy. Isaiah Stewart played well too. And once again, he didn't set the stat sheet, but he did what Isaiah Stewart does. He has six points, five rebounds, three assists, one steal, and one turnover in 19 minutes on three for three shooting. Of those five rebounds that he had, so many of them came at the right time. Whether it was a tip in off of a missed shot or a tip out to Cater Jaden to give the Pistons another possession. He just made so many crucial plays and crucial moments when the Pistons needed him and defensively he was just doing what he does right he's just a dog he's not gonna let you get anything easy and he was just ripping the ball away from guys and he was just giving max effort in the paint so I was very happy with what I saw from Stu and once again I said it before that's gonna be his role this season that's gonna be his role it's just doing all the little things knocking down the occasional three playing tough hard-nosed defense being physical and that's gonna be his game he's getting back to the player that he used to be evidence of that is how many three-point attempts he had zero so even though he's a capable three-point shooter he showed that last season his game is going to be in that paint 
He's going to do the dirty work for the Pistons, and that's exactly what we need him to do, and he's going to do a great job at that. So all in all, although I am disappointed that the Pistons let another game at home slip away, I am encouraged by the effort of this young team. The more games they experience together, the better they're going to be in late game situations. Now the Pistons are 0-3, but they're not 0-3 bad. If the Pistons can play near the level they did in the second half consistently this season, they can win 35, 40 games this year. The only question though is will they? And time's going to tell. But let me know what you guys saw. Was there anything that you guys saw that I missed? If so, let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. Next up for the Pistons are the Miami Heat on Monday in Miami. And I'll be right back here post game to break it all down. Appreciate you all hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Like him, hate him, that boy is born.